the other thing that's really important with regard to thyroid function is looking at iodine levels. We are being exposed to so many more halogens, which are sim similar chemical structure to iodine, and they compete with each other. So fluoride, chlorine, and bromine are all things that compete with iodine. And essentially, we have bromine that's in all our breads, and then we have fluoride that's in our drinking water and our toothpaste, and then we have chlorine in our drinking water, and then there's a lot of chemicals, even saccharose, that has a chlorine molecule that, again, so competes with the iodine molecule. Iodine is not only just important for thyroid function, and just so that you understand that um, iodine is one of the building blocks to make thyroid hormones. So if you don't have appropriate iodine intake, you're not going to have appropriate thyroid function. Um, but iodine is also really important for breast cancer prevention and uh, breast cysts and ovarian cysts and fibroids. So over the years, our uh, food supply of iodine is being reduced because the soils become deplete. And where the government many, many uh, years ago had added iodine to salt as a way to sort of cope with uh, goiter, uh, which was an iodine deficiency, um, people are not using table salt anymore and they tend to use more sea salt, which may or may not actually have much iodine in it. So for this reason, we're seeing a lot of thyroid function and basically, um, you know, I tend to use my clinical judgment, um, I use labs as supportive and I think patients are um, happier um, with the treatment they're receiving. I'm hugely excited with all the, you know, new developments and um, chronically going to conferences, learning uh, new and new strategies on how to improve uh, my patient's health, my health. and. Um, I'm really excited to uh, relay this information to my patients um, and just stay tuned because, you know, I'm still developing and uh, metamorphosing and my patients benefit because of it.